throughout the investigation, <laughs> we've had a, we've had a dedicated senior investigation officer overseeing the investigation. Up to fifteen specialist officers, uh, social services professionals, and safeguard leads working on the case at any one time, providing strategic support, expert advice, and specialist skills to PC Evergreens together. Each victim has had a dedicated support officer from the police and from the local authorities to ensure every aspect of safeguarding was considered. I mean, it's contradiction again, isn't it, Ian? I mean, that can't be right, can it? Well, I've only got two names of the chief, of the uh, senior officers. Yeah. Um. The full team, I don't know, but the, I have, the survivors have said that, yes, they, they were given a, uh, an individual officer that liaised constantly with how the investigation was going, things like that. Yeah. But they, 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 they went, I won't repeat what, they, what they've actually told me, but they, they're not really worth anything because they, they were only told what they wanted them to know. And that's how they felt. They said, well, they were only telling us what they wanted us to know. They didn't tell us how it was really going. But that's what you'd expect. They are going to say there was, there was three arrests at one point uh, and they were remanded. Uh, sorry, they weren't. They were let out. They were in for two days, questioning, and then released. It was four days later when one of the survivors had actually seen them down the street and they weren't even told that they'd been released. There you go. So there's a safe so, window. It, yeah, exactly. So they, they weren't even informed that they'd been, there was various things going on and they were finding out for themselves before the police were actually going and saying, oh, this has happened, this has happened. You know, so as as for having uh, an individual person there going through the case with them, it's a lot of crap. All, I, I'm, all, all I'm trying to illustrate here, Ian, you know, is that they're talking out of both sides of the mouth. Yeah. Every bit of this article, they're talking out of both sides. You can pull it apart, and I'm sure there'll be numerous survivors that will read this and go, are you having a laugh? Are you having a laugh? You know? It's almost like a propaganda piece, this. It looks very shiny. It looks like they're well in control, but they clearly can't be here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We also engaged on the with the National Crime Agency, Child Exploitation and Online Protection Command, other police forces and Operation Hydrant, the National League for the Police in Response, Oversight and Coordination of Child Sexual Abuse um, Investigations to help us with the intense and complex investigation. So they're saying that they've widened it even more, but why then is the safeguarding so lacking um, and why then have you got survivors coming to you telling you different stories if you've got exactly. agencies working together and they're on it? You know, going to the National Crime Agency. Maybe they engage with them to keep, get the story straight. <laughs> <laughs> How should we play this one? Yeah. You know, this is not yes. a piece. Simple. I mean, what all we're doing, uh, I've done enough of speaking to people, working with organisations to know when I can hear a survivor talking and when I can see that their story is not being heard and when also the police are saying one thing but doing another. So I've had enough of that in the past and you have, mm. it, you have yeah. it. So look at this article and just, it's like a dark cupboard that you just opened, a bit of light's coming and the cockroaches are just scattering all over the floor because it's yeah. exposing how inadequate they are but this propaganda piece is saying how adequate the treat in this, and no one needs to worry. They're right. They're writing here what they want us to believe. Yes. And you can, if you read between the lines and and you analyse every paragraph as we are doing, you can you can spot bullshit. <laughs> It's a play on left. words, isn't it? It's like politics. Exactly, They'll have some yeah. little dude in the office writing all these. Um, Responses to the truth coming out. Oh no, we've done all yeah. we can. Well, it's yeah. like a statement that can't show any cracks, a statement that's got to show uh, a pillar of strength that they're in control. I would rather them be honest. 
Yeah. I would ra rather than tell people that they haven't got the resources, they're really trying, and at this point we could do with help from other foot or whatever it takes. At this point, we need to get Boris to get his hand in his pocket and start, you know, whatever it takes, because then we can actually move forward. This isn't moving forward because it's not even explaining the story. Well, it's not you even know? moving, is it, really? No. It's a tale of two cities. Literally, it's just like, what place are you talking about that you're explaining this? Because this doesn't sound like Rochdale. This doesn't sound like Hull. This doesn't sound like Barrow and Furness. This doesn't sound like Accrington. No. But it's all the same stories with them all. Yeah. All they'll do, they'll probably have the same statement, just change a few of the wets. Yeah. Always show that they're in control, even if you're not. not. Well, well they, obviously, they obviously aren't in control, or we wouldn't be sat here discussing it. If a guy was, if a guy wanted to murder me, mate, and I had all the assurances, the reassurances of the police, it's not that good if they've sent me a text saying everything's all right, and then five minutes later, the guy comes kicking the door down, comes, grabs me, throw me in the car, and takes me away. Them assurances didn't mean nothing unless no, exactly. I follow it through with something. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, mm. as much as they're saying this, these girls are still in danger. The, the girls of Hull are still in danger if they're not being diligent enough. And that's the big point, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. We obtained detailed accounts from everyone identified as a victim or witness, uh, and these accounts, alongside the supporting evidence provided, led, led us to the arrest of 34 individuals in connection to the investigation. <laughs> As part of these arrests, we seized over 200 digital devices from suspects, every one which was for forensically examined. This included uh, analysis of message messaging services, social media, GPRS, cell site and connect data and contact data, making every effort to identify contact between the suspects or link them to the victims and all addresses of interest to the investigation. Over 10,000 text messages, Rob mentioned that before, were reviewed as part of the analysis. And so with all that there, that is what you call a plethora of different things going on there. So the point system wasn't sufficient enough to get any evidence. Yeah. With all that there, well, Apparently. what does it say as well about how we've done all of this investigating? We've looked at two hundred appliances. We've looked at we've arrested thirty four people, and we've looked at ten thousand messages, and not one of them leads us to a prosecution of any of these people. So the victims have no evidence against these people. So therefore, we've let them walk free. That's what it says. Yeah. If you if you watch the Sky Report, and I know this as a fact because I've actually seen the originals. It shows you uh, a copy of some text messages that were sent. Now, this was on uh, one of the one of the social media things, and on the Sky report, it actually blocks out the name, uh, who it was who was texting, because of obvious reasons. Now, I've seen the original, so surely that's enough evidence because I've seen a screenshot of these messages. Sure. So that name's on there. If that name's been mentioned, which I know it has, yeah. there's your link. Yeah. Unless I'm being wrong here. That requires diligence, mate. You know what I mean? <coughs> it wasn't in enough points. You know, I'd love to know this generation game crap that they've got going on here. I mean, you know, points make prizes, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at a lady that needs help, I couldn't be the one to tell her that that text message doesn't constitute enough points in order for me to say Exactly, yeah. The one who said about that was the Chief Inspector Rebecca Dickinson. Despite two years of intensive investigation, analysis and examination, we share the disappointment and frustration that we have been unable to identify sufficient evidence to corroborate or support the accounts given to us by the victims. As a result, we have been unable to meet the Crown Prosecution Service evidential threshold for us to formally charge anyone in relation to Operation Marksman. I mean, man, 
There you go. That's a bitter pill, that. That that must have been a, a gut punch for any survivor. Like Wheel of Fortune, isn't it? Yeah. No, it is. It's look at the draw. No, and look at you're a point below or whatever. No evidence of organised child sexual... Oh. <laughs> look at it this way as well, Gav. <laughs> um, they, they've been exposed, haven't they? Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're, you're going to get exposed read... on Saturday, mate. <laughs> If you read into it, you can see that it's just a load of... I mean, even Jim Gamble said it's a load of... This threshold's a load of crap because he's read all the files and, and, and all the evidence. He says he cannot believe that this hasn't made this threshold. He, You know, I mean, he, he, you know, he knows what he's on about. Uh, and he's read the full report. It's like the bar's been heightened, mate. You know, like it's high jump, in it? The, yeah, the, when they're getting a bit too close, they just lift it up a bit. Reach. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Whereas if this was, um, if they were meticulous and they'd done this across the board, I could understand it. But we are, as we spoke before, guys, that uh, the threshold on a lot of stuff now is, is that low that you can be in prison for the most ridiculous things nowadays, um, where it doesn't seem to be that amount of threshold or evidence. Um, and particularly, same again, when you're talking about an allegation of abuse, a violation to an individual and what that can do to them, you know? Uh, the, the, can't they corroborate psychological reports or whatever to make this threshold a bit more valid when you, you're actually getting a psychiatrist going, well, I don't know what you talk about evidence, but I'm looking in her eyes and the testimony she gave me, my professional opinion, this is all true, what's happened to her. Does that not count for anything nowadays? No, uh, it's not, it's not, no. I would like to reiterate that whilst current lines of inquiry are being exhausted, we will never fully close this investigation and I urge anyone with any new information to get in touch with us as a priority. We will Why would up. they? <laughs> exactly what I was waiting to say there. You know, yeah. they've, they've seen what's gone on. They've seen the way these girls have been threatened. So why would anybody else put themselves through that? Of course, mate. Of course. They're not going to come forward and go, yeah, it was me as well. They've been exposed. Let me, let me get it all. Let me drag, be dragged through all this pain I've had to go through for you to turn around and say, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's not going to happen, is it? We have formally requested the evidence provided to the broadcaster to see if there's any new pieces of evidence that have been provided to them that Humberside police are unaware of. Now, that's funny because they were saying that there was a whole heap of inaccuracies within that programme. Now, yeah, this, and now they're asking to help, yeah. <laughs> it was bullshit. It was bullshit, but actually, can we have that evidence, please? <laughs> and this is why it was so good to read this, mate. It's only a statement, but see how they this is like the Emperor's new clothes, no clothes, whatever. He's walking around with a see through fong on right now. You know what I mean? At this time, the broadcaster has not responded. Why? Because you were saying they weren't diligent enough and they, they weren't doing, uh, they were putting yeah. out all inaccuracies. They yeah. were starting them off a minute ago. <laughs> we encourage anyone that has been a victim of sexual abuse of any kind to get in touch using the non-emergency. Look, non-emergency line 101. So you, yeah. you're going to be behind There's not an emergency then. all kinds of problems, you know what I mean? You'll be treated seriously, yeah, in 101. I mean, what, what number of the queue are you going to be? You'll be providing hey. appropriate, appropriate support from the police and partner agencies. And we will do everything we can to investigate the case fully and bring those to commit. And even if you bring your 200 devices, even if we've got all this surveillance grid, the chances are it probably won't meet the threshold. So why don't we end it with that? It's it's like child line, isn't it? It's like, oh yeah, tell us who the and if and if they're quite prominent people, we'll make sure that the information gets buried and you don't get no support. Yes, Jewel, how are you doing? Lovely lady from Australia there, welcome along, talking about uh, the unfortunate scenario that's happening in this country, which is grooming, Jew. Uh, we've just been talking about uh, prevalent in a lot of towns and cities around the UK, but 
primarily tonight we've got a guest here, Ian Oke, who is um, got an organisation, and we'll get straight onto that now. Actually, right? Okay, do you want to go over the details, Ian, of the event location, where yeah. what what people need? You've got the flyer up there, so we're meeting at Walton Street Market, which is uh, right next to the football ground in Hull. We will mark match from there. It's about a mile uh, into the city centre, into Queen Victoria Square. Uh, we have various speakers, haven't we, Sharon? <laughs> Sharon's going to be uh, yes. saying a few words. Oh, um, maybe my last public. Couple... Couple... That's last public on... one. She might is be that... on the step, mate. I'm sorry. If she's on the step. How can she do that? Sat on the step. Are we going to do a satellite link? <laughs> Can't stay quiet for long. Um, yeah, so we've got about four speakers, uh, including myself, fortunately. But um, yeah, um, uh, yes, that's it. Just one feet on the ground. Let's show Hull what you know, and especially the survivors that you know they're not on their own. Uh, the police have failed them. I weren't, and I'm sure the group weren't. Really, what I've noticed with a lot of organisations is the compassion. Uh, whereas the police, they might act like they're compassionate, but by doing what they're doing, um, it kind of reverses that for me somewhat. Whereas I think in many ways, I wouldn't say a problem shared is a problem hard, but there's a lot of solace knowing that uh, members of the public are coming out in support and members of the public will be compassionate towards survivors because they know how frustrating and disappointing it is to get this story out because of its severe nature. Um, so I'm hoping that the people of Hull uh, will be in massive support for this. I'm hoping that everything will be nice and positive, which it will be anyway. But I'm hoping it's regarded in that way as well and not regarded in, oh, look at these load of right-wingers. Because this isn't a paradigm. When you're looking at a survivor, this is not a paradigm. This is just something that is happening in society as part of the, what someone mentioned before in the comment section, part of the breakdown of society. Can I just say as well, anybody that's turning up, just bear in mind that there are going to be survivors there. And so, you know, just have that in your mind all the time that, that, that there will be survivors in the crowd um, and they don't want to see carry on. They just want to get their message out there. They want to be believed and they want to be understood and they want action. That's all they want. So just be mindful of that. Anybody that's showing up. And just go, just go on a bit further from what Sarah's just said is that there's not just the, the survivors from Operation Maximum, there is yeah. survivors from coming from other parts of the country that I do know of. So, you know, let's, if anyone on who's watching from Hull, let's show everybody that Hull t is taking this seriously, you know. Fingers crossed I'm going to be there on Saturday. Excellent. Um, I'm going to be streaming it onto my Facebook channel and I'm going to be hard recording it. Sharon, I, I was kind of hoping that you would do the uh, Children's Matter dot news. Um, yes, I was but, intending to do so. Beautiful. So we've got all bases covered. Yes. Uh, we had footage as well, which I'll put on my bit shoot and whatnot. So as far as I'm concerned, it will be spread on f four, five, maybe six, seven yeah. different platforms. This and this is without talking about. The people that are coming down and their individual platforms and no doubt yourself as well uh, and if yeah. anyone wants to use any of this material to share it on their platform go for it if anyone sees any future uh, recordings i do of this event and they want to put it on their platform go for it i've got no problem with that at all um i'm looking forward to the event mate do you know anything else that we need to know about uh the police or anything else? Um, uh, not, nothing that uh, we need to worry about. I know that we've got uh, various groups threatening to attend, uh, being called far right at this moment in time. They've, uh, but apparently there's not a great deal of support for them in the city, which is good. 
Um, well, the council the, will always organise a lefty demo <laughs> against your well, anti-cancer protest. But um, I was going to ask you, uh, Ian, before I forget, is, is if there anybody turns up that would like to speak openly about whatever they've been along those lines obviously are they are you welcoming people to speak are you saying look just let's leave it to who we've got and we'll speak no 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 no. kind of if uh like we've said um quite openly i have have, as many speakers want to come up and speak and vent their anger on the grooming gang situation now we, we want to keep it as far away from any religion ethnicity anything like that is a no no you know, I was thinking more gang. personal stories, you know, that you can talk yeah, from by the all heart. Means. By all means. You know, if it's their truth, it's their truth, and it nobody can argue that. So that, exactly, yes. No, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. I have no issue with that. We've got my estimations is we, we meet at 10 30 uh at Walder Street Car Park. Uh we'll to begin the match approximately eleven o'clock. Uh, it's a, I've estimated about forty five minutes to get to the speaking location of Queen Victoria Square. Um, and I estimate a couple of hours on the square. So there's plenty of time for people to mingle, talk, get the speeches done. And anybody who wants to speak, and we've got time for that, let's do it. The more the more people speak, the better. Yeah, great, great. So it's just thinking if anybody watches this and they think, well, do you know what? I really want to tell my story. It's that now, you know, now might be a good time. Who Now's knows? a great time. Yeah, absolutely. And they just come and identify themselves to me and we'll make arrangements on the day. Yeah, absolutely. It's fine. It's a two hour so, train I've just discovered. So it's going to be a, a good early one for me. So I'm going to have to get myself in gear because I don't want to be late and legging it up the street after you try to do live while running after you at the same time. So <laughs> that before that, mate. <laughs> it's a two hour <laughs> drive as well, Phil. So I'll be the same. <laughs> oh, listen, right. We'll have to get a good early night Friday, you know, and just make sure we're nice and healthy and on it a good early start. I'm really looking forward to it going Great stuff. full as well. So, Brilliant. listen, thank you, Ian, for your time and good luck anyway for Saturday. Not that you need. Thank you. No, great. Cheers, mate. See you soon. Thanks. Right, Sharon. Sharon, thank you for co hosting that. Brought out some really good points. Um, Man, when you listen to that, you think, why don't more people know? It's shocking, isn't it? You know? I know. So I know. Many, wonder how many more towns and cities. wonder how many more, Sharon. You know, a lot of people have speculated on, but, you know, there's clearly a lot, isn't there? You know? Yeah. Education, isn't it? We need, to, we need to be the educators if the people that are supposed to be the educators are failing. Well, it's a pleasure to go down and shine a light on it, Sharon, to be fair. Speaking with Ian there, um, yeah. clearly it's not a town on the top of people's tongue when it comes to talking about grooming. So, let's Do you know what? I know that Ian's invested an awful lot in this as well and, and he's got off his own back and his own time with his own money and he's got, got things moving and He's not trying to gain anything for himself. He's not trying to get publicity for himself. He's not, look at me, look what I'm doing. He is just caring about his community. And he's a father who, who thought, well, if nobody else is doing it, I'll have to. And that's how we all get, isn't it? It's like, well, if we're, if, if it's not happening, we need to make, be the change you want to see. But it's a moral compass. If you've got a moral compass, Sharon, it's hard not to, isn't it? you know what I mean? But we know... The, where the country's at and whatnot. So if it takes a few people to do it, then then few people will do it. Um, so, yeah, Sharon, thank you again for jumping in. It, it's been brilliant. My pleasure. Brilliant. Lovely talking to you, Phil, as always. Please share and like, and there'll be more material coming. As Sharon has said, she's going to be streaming this onto this channel, um, Children's Matter News. I'm going to be streaming mine onto my Facebook, and then there's going to be hard recording that will go on to my Manic Man DJ's channel and my bit shoot as well. So it's going to be spread far and wide. I'm a telegram. And anywhere else, I can put it as well. So big thank you, Sharon. You have a great evening, whatever you're doing. And no doubt we'll be in touch over the next day or so anyway on the final details. Yes. You take care and I'll see you at the weekend. Thank Bye you for now. See you now. Bye, people.
So anyway, guys, you have a great night. You take care. God bless. God bless. See you later, guys. I love you. 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 Even the pissing haters. I love you. I love you. I love you.